We went to a couple of labels, Ice-T, and hooked it up. And they wasn't feeling what we was doing because I believe it was so innovative that they didn't know how to market it or didn't want to even take their time touching it. They just wanted us to most likely sound like something else that was out. So we uh, pressed up Show Clap on Showbiz Records, the red label, jumped in a green Legend Coupe and went around selling the album out the trunk of the car. We were like one of the first to do that in New York City. And it becomes like a blueprint. You know, many people know, you know, we we one of the first on the independent ground, but um, we're appreciative that the people who was receptive to the music we was doing, we didn't do it for everybody to love it. This is something that two kids from the street just wanted to do something to be accepted and noticed. And we did it our way. That was our only thing. We're going to do it our way. Our first hoodies, showing AG hoodies, had keep it real on the sleeve. Like, that's all we ever cared about. Hip hop is bigger than anybody. And, I, you know, I can't attribute to the destruction of it or anything like that. That album was like yesterday to me because it was a whole new experience on a high level with a big energy, big money involved, corporations is involved now, people that do their job that graduated from college is involved now in the promotion department, publicity department. It was very high intense and our record was getting noticed at a very high level very fast. And that was a process that was amazing to go through, you know what I mean? Because we went around the world on that project and it opened my eyes up totally. Like in the studio, I just know like show is such a perfectionist. A lot of the, the Runaway Slave album you hear right now, a lot of the beats didn't sound like that. They were totally different beats. But he would go in the studio two and three times and change the music. And I'm like, yo, I just got used to this record. This is dope. And he'll change it to something. Nah, nah. This is hotter than that. I gotta change the snare. I gotta, he's very much a perfectionist, but um, he's very much responsible for the sound and the culture in there. I was just a spitter. You know, I, I just knew I had this voice, I had this talent, and mixed with someone who masters music, I think it was a perfect chemistry because I took a lot of direction from him as a music guy. But the sharpness and the rawness that I have is uh, MC's MC, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of MC's that I hear that are so dope should run into a showbiz somewhere in their life because a lot of dudes make beats, but he's a producer. A producer's different. He has an idea for the record and how it should sound and what could make you sound best, you know what I'm saying? And as a raw MC, you need that so it could tighten the edges. And, and I think that's why the chemistry is what it is, you know? A lot of MC's can adapt, though because you have to simplify your approach and make it in a, a formal fashion where the people can accept it in general. And, uh, and that takes time, and I think that's helped me. I've been here 20 years. This is my 10th album, Everything is Buried. And I, I think I've continued to grow because I continue to pay attention to what's going on currently, what has been done already, and what hasn't been done. And I think where I'm going, hasn't been done and I'm not here tooting my own horn. I just love this music so much and I lobby for it so much. I appreciate it. I stay on my job. I stay sharpening my craft and I stay learning. And it's a tribute to what it could be. I mean, a lot of dudes don't take this as serious as they should, abuse the, the culture or whatever. And I don't want to sound like some old righteous, you know, be wearing God, but this is what it's about. You know what I'm saying? This is. This has gave us a voice to the world. You don't have to sing, you don't know how to speak well, you don't have to read or write, you don't have to be able to do any of that and still become a star. There's no other genre really where you can do that at. You know what I'm saying? You can have a nasal congestion, any, whatever you got. You could one arm, you could be in a wheelchair. If you're good at what you do, this, this field will recognize you and that's why I think it's so special because there's people around the world that need to express themselves. Um, the majority of the world is struggling. You know what I'm saying? And with someone expressing themselves and someone could say, that's how I feel. I could have, you can, I, I've been told we've, showing AG, Runaway Slave has dudes from prison and you helped me save my life. You helped me clean myself up off of drugs. Like I done hurt it all. And given that burden is why I take the music so serious. Deshaun, the street maniac, street monster is a, personal friend of show. 
you know, Big Al was running with us, you know, Law Finesse and Show was putting them out. And um, me and Finesse always sharpen our skills with the, with the words. We're on our lyrical kung fu. And that was a song at the time, that was our crew. It's me, Big Al, Law Finesse, Sun, Sunkiss, now his name is now, but, and we wanted to just represent on a nice crew cut. That's the song you're talking about? You represent, yeah. Yeah, represent. Yeah. And um, I think Big Al bodied us, but it's all good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but it was definitely dope. I listen to it to this day, you know what I'm saying? It's just to have us at that form because we was just getting our feet wet still. You know what I mean? It, this was the making of the first album. It didn't come out yet, so we didn't know what type of success it was going to have. But what we did know was we were bringing something different, something clean, you know what I'm saying? And something from the heart. And show was bringing a different sound to the table. I think what helped us was a lot of street people gravitate to our music along with a lot of people who like to dance and party. I don't know too many other people or groups or whatever in hip hop that had that formula where it came together so easily. And I think that's what was our specialty. We can talk about something conscious at the same time by telling you something about the street, but at the same time you're bouncing your head in the club too. It, it's, you can't put your finger on who show in AG is, you know what I'm saying? We can do hard to kill. Then we can do more than one way out of the ghetto. And then we can do party groove. Like we don't have no style. It's just what's around us and what we're in our lives at that moment. Finesse, if you listen to the record, Digging in the Craze, show says, um, I formed a, a production company, me and Diamond performed a production company called Digging in the Crates. And that's what it was, just them two at first. Um, and they were actually into getting me into the studio producing me, you know what I'm saying? At the time, if you know, the Soul Clap is produced by Show and Diamond. One day I didn't come to the studio and they had all this time booked. So they both rhymed on the track. It's the first time the show's ever rhymed. And they did a song called Where's Andre? Because I didn't <laughs> show up. And from then on, we did the song Digging in the Crates where me and Finesse were usually the ones rhyming where Diamond and Show got on it, and that was the official, we named the song Digging in the Crates, and that's what it's been since. His passion is for the music. Yeah. And, you know, he, he likes to do things 100%, like I tell you, he's a perfectionist. So he'd rather spend 100%, 100% of the time working on music than 75% of the time music and 25% on a rhyme. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that goes. Now, that makes I, sense. I can put, being around digging in the crates, I know how to they use a machine. I know where to get records. I know how to listen to records. I did, look at my crew. That's not my passion, you know what I'm saying? So with me doing 100% at what I do and him doing 100% of what we, he does, that means we're giving you 100% of our talent, our craft, and the time we took to create this, you know what I'm saying?